Uh, this is ensuring your continuous performance improvement, and it's going to be led by our faculty member, uh, Dr. Janice Garfield, and who is one of our Woods recipients. So with that, I'm going to uh, turn things over to Jan, and she's going to take us through the session. Thank you, Scott. Um, and do you see my screen? Yes, we see it now. Yes, excellent. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for this conversation about your own continuous performance improvement. I'm Jan Garfield, and I'm a member of the contributing faculty for Riley College of Education and Leadership. Specifically, I teach in the PhD in Education program. As a continuing faculty member, the knowledge and skills that I contribute to Walden are my experience and service as a Baldridge examiner. The Malcolm Baldrige Quality Award is one of the highest levels of recognition for performance excellence for United States organizations. Let's look at our learning objectives for this webinar. We have four. First of all, to use the Baldrige framework to design and implement our own systematic process for continuous performance improvement at Walden. Secondly, to use Walden's strategic goals taken from our 2012-2016 strategic plan, specifically Walden's mission, vision, and values, as key factors for organizing and achieving our own performance object objectives, designing action plans, and identifying performance goals and measures. We'll also practice drafting actionable, evidence-based professional development goals and finally and importantly, we're going to identify relevant and timely measures and indicators of performance. For the purpose of this webinar and beyond, think of yourself as a consumer of analytical data and develop your own process for making analytical, evidence-based decisions about your own professional development. Here it is. Here's the Baldrige Systems Framework, famously known as the Baldrige Hamburger or the Baldrige Burger. Notice that there are seven categories that define processes and results, and this is the framework that we'll use. First of all, look at this top bun, if you will. This is the organization profile. In her State of the Union address, or State of the University address, rather, at last week's National Faculty Meeting, President Baum referenced the Baldrige-based work of Patrick Lencioni. For Lencioni, the organizational profile is a playbook. It sets the context for the way Walden operates, and it serves as an overarching guide for our own performance management system. Underneath that top bun, there's what's known as the leadership triad, encompassing categories of leadership, strategic planning, and customer focus. Leaders set the direction for the university, and they look for future opportunities. And all of that is laid out in a strategic plan and guided by a focus on customers. The bottom bun, the foundation of the Baldrige system, is measurement, analysis, and knowledge management. This is the system foundation, and it's critical to effective management and to utilizing a fact-based, knowledge-driven system for improving performance. And finally, the three categories on the right-hand side, this is known as the results triad encompassing a workforce focus, in other words, your own capability and capacity, satisfaction and engagement, a focus on operations and key work processes for teaching and learning, and finally, results. Notice that all of our actions point toward results. The composite of student learning outcomes, customer-focused outcomes, your workforce-focused outcomes, the university's leadership and government system, budget and market results, 
everything culminates in Category 7, results. So as an overview, here's the Baldrige Performance Excellence System. It's important because it creates an awareness and an educational program that promotes performance excellence and sustainability. Importantly, it is values-based. It's a holistic, systematic framework, and it includes seven categories, six of them having to do with process, and one of them, finally, the results, yielded by the effectiveness of those processes. So here they are in another form. Leadership, strategic planning, and customer focus, the leadership triad. Measurement, analysis, and knowledge management, the foundation of everything. And finally, the results triad, workforce focus, operations focus, and results. Let's go back to Category 4 for one moment and make that point. Category 4, your opportunity to measure and analyze and learn from your performance is the foundation of our personal process of making analytical, evidence-based decisions about our own professional development. This should look very familiar. Let's take a, a, an opportunity to dig a little bit deeper and align the Baldrige framework and key factors from Walden's organizational profile, what Lencioni calls Walden's playbook. We're very familiar with Walden's mission. Key points are that we serve a diverse community of professionals, students who are already career professionals, and we're helping them transform themselves into scholar practitioners who can bring about positive change. We envision a distinctively different 21st century learning community where knowledge is considered to be worthy to the extent that it can be applied to critical societal challenges to advance the greater global good. In other words, each one of us is a player on the world stage. And undergirding mission and vision are Walden's values. Quite simply, there are three. Quality, integrity, and student-centeredness. Everything we do is grounded in those three core values. You're looking at a screenshot of page two of Walden University's 2012 to 2016 strategic plan. And you'll want to be able to find this for yourself. Let me tell you how. If you go to the Faculty Resources tab, choose Publications and Policies. And then within the Publications and Policies, choose Walden's Strategic Plan. These university goals appear on page two. Notice the emphasis on providing a multi-contextual educational opportunity for career learners. Notice the emphasis on innovation in our educational programs. We're also focused on diverse process learning approaches and an inquiry action model. Finally, we produce graduates who are scholarly and reflective practitioners who bring about positive social change. Note the alignment of these university goals and Walden's mission, vision, and values. We won't take the opportunity to do that right now, but I'm sure in looking over these university goals, you were already noticing some of the connections and the linkages between Walden's mission, vision, and values and the university-wide goals. Now you're looking at a screenshot of page 7 of Walden's 2012-2016 strategic plan. Specifically, you're looking at Walden's strategic goals. And what we say is that in order to achieve the university's vision, and remember that's to be a distinctively different 21st century learning community, in which knowledge is worthy only to the extent that it's applicable to immediate solutions of societal challenges to bring about positive social change on a global scale. 
So in order to do that, these are the university's strategic objectives. Each of us, each one of us, needs to inspire students and enable their success. We need to expand Walden's reach through new products and discovering new markets. We need to enhance the university's quality and reputation. We need to be mindful of managing what we do within a new regulatory environment. And we need to differentiate Walden. Let's go back one more time. What you're looking at now is the left-hand side of that Baldridge, Bald, Baldridge Burger model. And let's dive a little bit deeper into processes related to the leadership category. These would be our own teaching and learning processes that promote quality, integrity, and student-centeredness. In terms of strategic planning, these are our processes that align with the university goals and strategies. And in terms of customer focus, these are the, these are the processes that we develop that serve a diverse community of career professionals. Looking at the right-hand side of the Baldridge Burger in terms of our own professional development. So in Category 5, the workforce focus, these are the processes to assess and improve our own capability and capacity and engagement in Walden University. In the operations focus, Category 6, these are the processes to design, manage, and improve our teaching and learning and innovation. And finally, ultimately, Category 7, these are the performance results. Please remember that the goal of this webinar is that you would think of yourself as a consumer of analytical data and use those data to develop your own process for making analytical and evidence-based decisions about your own professional development. Here's another tool. Perhaps you're familiar with Kaplan and Norton's balanced scorecard. As we think about those metrics, those analytics that we're using to understand our own professional development, one way you might approach this is from the systems perspective that balances values. You might consider Walden's bottom line and the financial outcomes. You'll always consider Walden's customers because our value is that we are student-centered. Similarly, our business processes have to do with quality and integrity. And our chief purpose is learning and growth. And your strategy, your own professional development strategy, is at the center of that balanced scorecard. So let's get to work. Let's look at ways to develop a systematic process for drafting our own individual performance objectives. And these objectives need to be SMART. That is, our performance development goals are specific, they're measurable, they're attainable, they're relevant, and they're time-bound. So for example, are these goals SMART? Within the next four months, between September and December of 2013, for example, I will participate in three Center for Faculty Excellence webinars. And here's another one. During the upcoming academic year, which is to say academic term, which would be the 2013 fall term, I will apply learning outcomes from Center for Faculty Excellence webinars in my Walden work. So, which of the SMART dimensions are met? Let's look at the first one. Within the next four months, between September and December, I will participate in three CFE webinars. Scott, shall we open the microphone and talk about it? Sure. So uh, what I'll do is if you want to share your thoughts on whether you think these are smart or not, if you would click the raise hand button and we can open up your microphone for discussion. Uh, again, just click the raise hand button if you want to share your thoughts. Okay. Um, looks like we'll go with uh, Susan. Um, yes, I think the first one meets the um, smart dimensions. 
specifically? What are you seeing, Susan? Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, they are specific because they're stating exactly what I want to do. They're measurable because they are talking about in the next four months and participate in three webinars. They're attainable, I guess, under the assumption that there would continue to be webinars uh, presented for the next four months. Excellent. Um, they're relevant because the webinars that are presented are connected to our tasks and they're time bound with the four months. Thank you, Susan. Okay, how about the next one? During the upcoming academic year, which is the 2013 fall academic term, which is the 2013 fall term, I will apply learning outcomes from CFA webinars in my Walden work. Okay. And Jan, did you want to go to someone else who has their hand raised? Yes, please. Okay. Thanks. Um, we we'll go to uh, Ramo. I think. Ramo or Ramo? I may not be pronouncing your it's name. Ramo, right. long A. Ramo. Okay, got it. Well, I'm looking at it, and it says during the upcoming academic term, fine. We've got parameters, boundaries, apply learning outcomes. But to me, I don't, I do not think that is specific enough. And namely, because learning outcomes regarding teaching, research, or mentoring a student, we don't. To, in my view, we don't have a specific enough um, boundary applied to that. And yes, it could be a measurable, attainable, but and it may or may not be relevant. If you have learning outcomes in teaching when most of your work is advising, then it's not relevant. But it is time bound. So I do not believe there are smart dimensions. There are smart uh, goals. Excellent. It, what, and you've both made every point that that. I wanted to make. Thank you for, for noting that. Susan said um, that there was an assumption about attainability that had to do with whether or not the webinars were offered. So one needs to consider that there are both internal and external conditions for setting these goals at times. And then, of course, do you personally have the willingness, availability, and opportunity, which might include the appropriate technology, to access the webinars? And um, Remo, thank you very much for your assessment of the second one, because I think the answer is it depends. Um, it depends on the context of Walden University and your own overall plan. What, what we might uh, resolve is that with respect to the second one, what you have here is an overarching goal to apply the learning outcomes from CFE webinars. You might have to take that to a next step and identify those specific learning outcomes and then go further and say what the measures are for applying each of those learning outcomes. So sometimes the goal itself um, is just the beginning. Scott, I'm having trouble advancing. There it is. Okay. So the next slide, aligning your professional development plan and Walden's goals and strategies. Let's go back to what we um, took from the university goals and the strategic objectives and see if we can align SMART goals with the university and goal strategy that appears on the screen. The goal to provide an inquiry action model of education that fosters our students' research, discovery, and critical thinking and results in their professional excellence. And secondly, inspiring students and enabling their success. And because the goal and the objective seem to align, perhaps we could come up with goals that address both. So let's sketch a performance goal. Any ideas? Scott, would you open the microphone again? Sure. Um, anyone who wants to contribute their thoughts here, go ahead and click the raise hand button and we will open your mics. Okay, looks like we have John. All right, let me see if there's anyone. Okay, looks like John. Uh, we've unmuted you. Go ahead and share your thoughts. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Sure can. Okay. I have a problem with the framing of the first one as I did in the last slide, which was uh, an incongruity between the first and the second. 
But going to this one, um, I teach in the BSBA department. And uh, most of the students that I work with are either um, partially employed, not employed, or in lower level positions in their companies. Uh, they have difficult situations in being able to basically critically think, write, and follow directions. And I do believe in research, discovery, and critical thinking. But I teach the capstone course, which is the last course in the program. And none of this is showing up in my capstone students. So it tells me that possibly the department, or the not the department, but the program needs to be reevaluated so that the foundational knowledge is provided in the early courses and then tested periodically throughout the program so that by the time they reach the last class, they're using this on a regular basis and they're able to succeed. Because I really like to see this happen. So given that the overarching goal might be too broad and too ambitious, could you, could you take it apart? And could you develop action plans, so to speak, from individual pieces of that larger university goal? Sure. I could take this piece right here. And using the current course that I have, if I could modify it, which I can't, uh, mm -hmm. but but because uh, again the frame the framework is is it this this systemic problems that we have through the university and I've been here now 15 years, um, but the bottom line is that if I were to do this in a, in an open structure, then what I would do is I would start start my first week or 10 days with backgrounding and showing my students deep learning techniques so that they could start doing research. I'd give them a research challenge to go into the library and find tools to work with, and then show them what these tools can be used for and excite them about taking these same tools back into their workplaces and doing research to improve their own companies. I would ask them from a critical thinking perspective at the next step, what have they learned from that? And what are they doing with this to change the world so that it meets our world and mission? And then finally, I would ask them to write a short essay on how they believe that by using these tools, they can create professional excellence from them uh, within them that their employers will see, that their, their colleagues will see, and that will eventually over time result in significant improvements in their position. Thank you, John. Clearly, you've, you've thought this through comprehensively. The only thought that I would add is um, to remind all of us of the power of evidence. If you go back to the Baldrige model, category one is leadership. And the job of leaders is to make evidence-based decisions that guide and sustain the organization. The data that you are collecting about students' ability and their opportunities for improvement would be valuable evidence to contribute toward making those decisions about things that you mentioned, like curricular revision mm -hmm. and um, fine-tuning what we understand about our students' needs and expectations. So I, 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 think, I think that your comments are very appropriate and very helpful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's just move on um, so that we have an opportunity to do a brief poll. Again, we've got two sketched uh, performance objectives to look at. The first one, and let's do this one at a time, let's see what we think as a group about the dimensions of specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound with, with relationship to this sketched professional uh, performance objective. In the academic year 2013-14, 80% of my doctoral students will receive form and style feedback that notes fewer than five recurring errors in compliance with APA 6th edition. So how do we do this, Scott? Shall we put up a poll and see what we think? Yes, so I'm going to put the poll on the screen. And if you would select uh, the aspects of SMART that have been um, met. So uh, you can choose all that apply. Basically, don't choose the ones where um, you don't feel that it's met. I, I'll give you a chance to do that.
Okay, give you just one more minute. And again, check all the aspects that you think have been met uh, in the goal that we just talked about uh, for the SMART criteria. And we'll give you just another minute, get a couple other people to vote. You can uh, just click in the check boxes and that will select that answer uh, next to each aspect. Okay, all right, gonna go ahead and close it out and share the results. And Jen, you should be able to see it over in the uh, right area, either under polls or attendee view. Um, but basically it looks like um, everyone selected smart, measurable, relevant, and time bound, and only uh, half selected attainable for the goal that we were discussing. <laughs> Thank you. Let's look at the other one. Okay. So same thing. Uh, we're going to just do the, the same poll again. So take a look at this question before we go to the poll because I know you won't be able to see it. So the question on the right, take a moment and think about that one. And then I'll open up the poll. And again, select the ones where you think that it's met and leave the items where you don't think the aspect is met unchecked. And you can go ahead and make your selections now. Okay, and we'll give everyone just another minute. We want to hear from everyone. Looks like we've got half the people who have made a selection, so I'll give you just about five more seconds, and then we'll close the poll out. All right, close it out, and you should be able to see the results on here. So, um, Janet, it looks like it's unanimous um, that all believe um, who participate in the poll that is relevant and time-bound. Um, no one selected attainable, and then we had about a third um, indicated that it was measurable, and two-thirds uh, that it was specific. All right, and I think in both cases, the attainable dimension may have been affected by the percentages. Um, in the first instance, 80% of doctoral students, um, and I would imagine that those who have doctoral students are thinking about each one individually. And similarly, with the second goal, that 100% of mentees would complete a significant body of work. Again, it might be necessary to develop individual objectives for individual students. 100% is a bit ambitious. And, my, and might make that, uh, that might be the reason that so few people, no one in fact, thought that that was attainable. But when it comes to completing a significant body of work, again, that might differ according to students. And you might take that overarching goal and define it further for each of your mentees. In category seven, of the Baldrige criteria, performance results are divided, uh, segmented, if you will, into student learning and performance outcomes, stakeholder results and workforce results, leadership and shared governance results, and financial outcomes. Remember, if you will, that balanced scorecard uh, model from Kaplan and Norton. What you might want to do if you segment your own performance results is line up those different segments according to Walden's mission, vision, values, and goals, and balance those values for all of the stakeholders involved. Let's look at another model. This slide comes from the May 16th webinar on contributing faculty evaluations that was presented by our colleagues Alexandra Arano and Kimberly Bonora from the Center for Faculty Excellence, and Jeffrey Graham from Human Resources. And I wanted to pull this slide up to show you opportunities for developing your own professional development goals within this larger framework provided by CFE and Human Resources. Let's look at the left side of the screen for a moment. Timely grades and classroom participation. In terms of measurable professional development goals, those are really low-hanging fruit. We already know that the university has key performance indicators around our timely submission of grades. 
And similarly, the university is watching our supervisors are monitoring our classroom participation and the quality of our engagement. So when it comes to developing personal professional development goals, you might want to begin there and line some of your professional development goals, align them with those indicators that you already know are operative within the university. Now, over on the right-hand side, I chose retention rates as an example of a measure that we could all follow, but that might operate, or seemingly so, at the university level. Here's the bigger picture. It, at the national faculty meeting last week, both President Baum and CAO Rydell noted Walden's outstanding achievement in the reaffirmation of accreditation by the Higher Learning Commission. We are all responsible for that achievement and for sustaining those efforts. The Higher Learning Commission Criterion 4C says this, the institution demonstrates a commitment to educational improvement through ongoing attention to retention, persistence, and completion rates in its degree and certificate programs. So think about this. When you go back to that unattainable performance objective, the one that we looked at that 100% of our students would complete a significant body of work, Think about how a goal like that aligns with the university goal and attention to Higher Learning Commission criteria, specifically retention rates. So if you were thinking that it's not possible on an individual level to create a performance goal that aligns with the university, look at retention rates as an example. You might want to look at the HLC criteria and see where else your own professional development goals line up with Higher Learning Commission expectations. Because you know reaffirmation of accreditation is an ongoing initiative and one of the ways that Walden differentiates itself. Let's take a moment to brainstorm some measures and indicators that demonstrate process effectiveness, show our own progress toward achieving performance goals, and reveal opportunities for improvement. It's a big question with a lot of detail, so let me lead off with one example. In my recent conversation with my supervisor about my professional development goals, one of the um, outcomes of that conversation was that I would look for opportunities to collaborate with students on research projects that would lead to publications, publications that would give them experience and advance their professional development, as well as my own. Could we open up the mics, Scott, and see if anyone has any ideas about some of the measures and indicators we could use for process effectiveness, achieving performance goals, and discovering some opportunities for improvement? Sure. Um, so I invite anyone who wants to share their thoughts on these, if you would just click the uh, raise hand button, and we will unmute your microphone. And it looks like uh, we have um, Remo up again. So Remo, go ahead and share your thoughts. Hi, uh, guys. It's, um, <clears throat> I was thinking about giving feedback to mentees on their proposal over this upcoming semester. And I'm just thinking, would it be a valuable goal to say, um, I will offer uh, two um, high quality feedback on proposals per week per student? I think two would be. Uh, attainable, uh, and having um, already taken the um, Buried Under Feedback webinar, which was great, and I learned some key strategies from that that I would like to implement this upcoming semester to try and reveal that I have that I can improve in my ability to offer feedback. So I'm believing it's specific. Um, I'm believing it's attainable because right now I only have nine advisees. Um, it's measurable, um, it's uh, timely, and it's um, ugh, smart, relevant. So that's what I'm thinking. That's terrific. And thank you, Ramo, for going back and, and wrapping up, folding in some of the earlier conversation. Thanks very much. <laughs> we have a couple others. We'll go to the other hands raised. Yes. John? Yep. 
John, you're uh, unmuted if you want to go ahead and share your thoughts. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes, I just had a conversation with Dr. Espinosa, my department chair, yesterday um, to solve a problem that, or actually a challenge that we have as, as a class in how do we measure performance of our students. Well, we use a business simulation that is published by um, the University of Alabama called BSG. And it's an incredibly effective and good tool because it has students over six weeks actually manage a virtual business and compete globally. But we don't have any ranking of where we stand as an institution compared to those we compete with. And so my offer to her was to contact the owners of that simulation and see if we could create a tiering of uh, performance by university. There's about 400 universities that compete every week and to show where we stand as an institution that I can then go back and take as a motivational tool for my students to do better each term. Excellent. Thank you for that example, John. Thank you. Sure. And then it looks like um, Kurt has his hand raised. Go ahead, Kurt. Um, this is Kurt Shock. This truly is a brainstorm because it just kind of occurred to me uh, especially when someone was speaking about providing feedback and so on. Some faculty um, try to do chat sessions, um, you know, rely on synchronous chat sessions with MNTs, and perhaps one measure of uh, process would be to measure the number of chat sessions that are held as well as the number of students who participate in those. In other words, out of, say, 10 mentees to 7, 8, however many students participate, and a little bit more um, difficult might be to measure the effectiveness of those chat sessions or the involvement of the students in those, but uh, at least kind of documenting how many and how many participate might give some sense of, of process. And uh, the number participating at least would let me know, is there something I need to do differently uh, to get more of them involved and to get more of them involved more substantially somehow? Great. And thank you for bringing up the usefulness of starting with just counting and then taking it to the next level of not only how many attended, but what was the outcome of, of having participated. The evolution of a performance measure. Super. Let's move on. <clears throat> Here's one more visual for you to consider. I don't know the origin of this visual except that it was used by Julie First Bovey in her presentation last January at the National Faculty Me uh, Meeting and again last April in the subsequent webinar. And she used this model to show the cyclical nature of process improvement. So analytics-based decision making as we think about our own performance improvement based on data has six key steps. First of all, we need to identify the opportunity. In other words, in order to frame our own SMART goal, we need to be able to identify where we have an opportunity for professional development and performance improvement. And then we need to review historical performance data and examine meaningful comparisons and perhaps find some best practices to use as a model for our own improvement. Then we need to consider the variables that affect our performance. And we, and we did a wonderful job of this earlier um, in noting that in order to meet a performance goal to attend three CFE webinars, we first need to know they're being offered. So there are internal and external considerations. But what are those variables that affect our performance and ultimately our results? Then we need to collect the data, we need to analyze the data, and finally we need to act on the results to bring about continuous improvement. And I would add one more step, and that is tell your story. It's one thing to go through this process and to repeat it in a cyclical manner for continuous performance improvement. And it's another to seize the opportunity at the end of a cycle to discuss what you've done and tell your story. It can be a story about a return on investment. It can be a story about outcomes measures and how you are continuing to, perf to improve your performance. We have an opportunity to tell our story annually 
in performance evaluations, what other opportunities can you find or create to tell your story of process improvement? Let's look at some of those benefits of implementing quality improvement systems. We've talked about how it helps you focus on the big picture. Things like Walden's journey for reaffirmation of accreditation, Walden's ability to differentiate itself. It helps you develop a systems perspective in all that you do and keep everybody focused on the institution's goals and strategic um, priorities. Analyzing data and becoming focused on analytics facilitates your decision making and the decision making of our leaders. It facilitates teamwork. I think a good example of this is the recent Atlanta residency where CFE staff members led us in a conversation about how we could, as teachers at the residency, um, be more effective in team teaching and collaboration. It increases student and stakeholder satisfaction. We know the importance of innovation. For example, last week President Baum noted in regard to Walden's innovation, the accelerated pathway model in Riley College of Education, the customized professional cert certificate, our new process for e-billing of international students, and the English pathway, which is a conditional admission for low English proficiency students. So innovation is an important focus for Walden. And finally, emphasizing results stimulates further personal and organizational learning. There are a number of different ways the Baldridge Initiative is showing up at Walden these days. The co-curricular review process is Baldridge-based, and it was described in the June 2013 issue of Assessment Matters. There are a couple of courses that use the Baldridge criteria. I have two of them listed here, and perhaps you know of more. Um, accreditation criteria are often Baldridge-based. The Higher Learning Commission's criteria for reaffirmation of accreditation are based on Baldridge. The ACBSP accreditation um, that our management and technology colleagues recently used um, is Baldridge-based, as are the CE, CCNE um, criteria for our nursing colleagues. We have a Baldridge community of scholarship and practice. We had sessions in the January 2013 National Faculty Meeting about implementing Baldridge at Walden. What you're looking at here is a picture of the, um, the center fair and our Baldridge exhibit there. And finally, of course, there's today's Woods presentation, for which I thank you very much. Anything further? Do you have any any last additional questions you'd like to ask Jan uh, before we conclude the webinar? Uh, click the raise hand button or send your questions in through the questions box and we can answer them that way. Um, while you're sending any um, additional thoughts or, or thinking about questions you might have, I uh, do want to direct you over to the questions area in your control panel. I have put the link for the feedback survey so we can get your feedback on today's session uh, as well as it's an opportunity for you to identify other professional development needs that you have. So if you click the link um, you should see the survey and then be able to select um, the option that's toward the bottom and again it's Woods ensuring your own continuous performance improvement. Um, this session today was uh, generated based on uh, Jan B. nominated for a Woods nomination. So if you know of a colleague who um, has done something outstanding uh, related to teaching and learning at the university, uh, feel free to nominate uh, your uh, colleagues. And the nomination form is on our CFE eCampus community. Uh, let me take a look. Looks like we have uh, just like some kudos for you, Jan, from your uh, colleagues today. Uh, Option, a great presentation, and another one, uh, uh, excellent presentation. Thank you, very useful. So it uh, doesn't look like any questions, but additional kudos for you, Jan, and I, I concur. A great job on this session. Um, I think we all took away some uh, good strategies for SMART goals and um, aligning these with strategic goals. Um, since we don't have any additional questions, uh, Jan, I'll just turn it over to you one last time if you have any concluding thoughts. Scott, thank you very much for your support. I don't know if folks know how many hours and hours and hours Scott spends working with faculty members to bring them up to speed on Woods 
presentations, and I'm very grateful, Scott. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you for that, Jan. Um, you made my job pretty easy because you uh, definitely uh, pulled this together very nicely. So thanks again, Jan, for uh, providing some great conversation today, and thank you for attendees for um, attending today and also joining in the conversation. This concludes our webinar, everyone. Goodbye for now.